Well, good morning, Matthias. Uh, we go straight directly into the session here with uh, welcoming Omikai from uh, Sweden. I hope you can hear me and I hope that everything is loud and clear here so our audience can uh, hopefully learn a lot from you the next hour or so, right? It's perfect. I hear you loud and clear. I'm ready to go to kickstart this uh, wonderful day. Fantastic. Uh, just for the audience, I know it's the first session of today and uh, and everything will, of course, be recorded. You can see there is a, a QR code on top of uh, Matthias's head. It will be uh, it will fly away in a moment. It is just if you uh, if you scan the QR code, it, I will bring it back uh, forth and back during the presentation. But if you scan the QR code, uh, you, you will get directly to Matthias's uh, profile on LinkedIn. So you can connect with him in case you have further questions. I'm sure that uh, this will be an exciting session. So uh, uh, Matthias, um, uh, before we go into a presentation, um, we have known each other for some years now. I was just wondering, uh, it's also been a while since we met in person. So uh, what is uh, what is Omikai and, and where are you at today? Omikai is a cloud ERP system and we are uh, helping customers to, to achieve digitalization and automation. Uh, and we are doing that and we're growing as a company. Uh, we are targeting both the packaging and printing industry with uh, customers in, in uh, we have activity in, in 11 countries right now. 11 uh, and, countries, uh, wow. Yeah. I mean, because when I met you the last time, I think it was like mainly the Scandinavian countries that you were focusing on. But uh, so it seems that, that uh, people are really appreciating your approach. And one of the approaches I like much about uh, Omikai is that you made like one solution for everybody. Mm -hmm. So that basically means that if you, if you buy Omikai, you get the full package. You don't have to buy modules. You don't have to buy add-ons. Uh, every upgrade you do is for all customers, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the calculation engine and the, the planning engine is for all types of uh, printing industry. We, we have our uh, target business segments that we have been focusing uh, most on uh, from history, but, but it's a very flexible and open uh, solution. And we are having uh, a steady core that, that can handle these type of, of uh, solutions uh, mm. and bring values to the customers. Mm. And and if you look at, uh, because I mean, when you started uh, Omikai uh, some years ago, actually now, uh, I remember that it was like, you didn't come from the industry. Uh, so, I mean, for you, it was like, okay, what segment should I target? And then you uh, got your hands on the printing <clears throat> industry. How is that from, uh, I mean, I remember I spoke to your chairman of the board, Thomas, and he once said, but these broad ERP uh, systems and MIS system perspective is maybe not the future. The future is maybe w w way more to be focused on industries. Is that still your uh, opinion after years in the industry? Yeah, I think so. And I, uh, I came in for, from other businesses, but always have a focus on ERPs and digitalization and automation. I think it was good to have a knowledge from other businesses to, to take to this industry. Uh, so, I mean, I, and I mean also that many of the other systems uh, out there, uh, the more generic ERP systems have had a hard, tough job to, to, to suit the needs of, of this business. Uh, many companies and people from this business say they are unique and, and there are all, a lot of uniqueness here, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is what we're trying to, to, to target with a niche product. When I when I introduce you or you introduce yourself, you, you introduce yourself as being a cloud based uh, uh, solution. I was just thinking that that today a lot of things is uh, cloud based, but I think that one of the KPIs that you have with Omikai is that because you are a relatively new player in the field, you didn't have legacy to take into account. You could basically start from scratch, and you are born out of the internet, right? So it's always been cloud based. It's always been uh, using uh, all the the services of the flexibility flexibility that you have of uh, of, of of being a, a web application, uh, how is that today? Because I remember, I mean, it it might be old school and old fashioned to hear, but I think that in the old times it was like, no, I don't really want my data to be in the cloud because I want it to yeah. be on my own server and it's more safe and you know things like that. How is uh, customers approaching that perspective in in these days? Uh, it's been like that in the beginning, yeah, but it's changed very, very fast. Uh, uh, people are more and more open to, to cloud technologies. And I think cloud te technologies is a must to, 
to build a future-proof scalable solution, uh, as we're going to show here. Uh, because I think that uh, building these integrations and, and building the future-proof tech stack uh, of, of uh, different uh, best-of-breed products working together, uh, to b- make this possible, you have to have an open, uh, integrationable uh, APIs, and, and that you can accomplish by, uh, by a cloud-based solution. And I was also thinking that when you talk about the the, the uh, openness and the APIs and that, because when you now operate in eleven different countries, I take that uh, you sometimes face the issues about different taxation rules and different accounting rules and different, let's say, kind of things where it is instead of trying to be the the the, the solution for everything, basically by having that open approach, you can you can integrate to the best breed in uh, of software in that particular market. So you don't have to speak all languages natively entirely, right? No, I think we, uh, together with most of other uh, suppliers here today, are uh, focusing on the workflow uh, up until uh, invoicing. And, and uh, they don't do accounting. We don't do it either because that is different in every country. So then you have to integrate with financial systems and it could be different financial systems in, in every country. So we have to have a very openness and very f- flexible way of making integration, not a static way, because uh, as you said, the best of breed uh, products that you need to integrate with could differ from some time to time. Uh, you mm-hmm. can change financial systems, you can change e-commerce system, and you have to be a, very easily to, to, to uh, maintain and, and uh, uh, do these kind of changes over time. Mm. Um, another thing that came to mind is uh, uh, operating in 11 countries now. How, I mean, uh, you started out in Sweden, uh, in uh, Vestos, uh, just outside Stockholm, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and mm-hmm. I was I was just thinking that the, I remember that when we met many years ago, it was like, okay, we have a customer in Finland or we have a customer in, in Norway. And, and, and you traveled a little bit between these kind of customers in, in the Nordic because uh, it was a young company at the time. I also think that you're a very hands-on person that really would like to make sure that your customers get what they uh, need. And, and I mean, that, that perspective. So have you been able to maintain that proximity to your to your customers even in so many countries or how do you manage is it through distribution or, or do you manage everything yourself yeah uh, yeah we, we have of course i i if i traveled a lot before i'm traveling more and more uh, now today also because we want to be a company that have a very close proximity to to the customers as you say mm-hmm. we don't want to be a, a supplier supplying something then saying good luck and bye we want to be a partner and, and using our proximity to help them with uh, customer success over time. Uh, and we have a, a network of partners, of course, but we are also very much uh, participating and will participate even more in the future because I think our knowledge about the best practices and how we can use the system best uh, is very, very important to 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 have a successful project. Mm. Um, and another thing that I, I also found very nice about uh, Omikai was that you realized already from the beginning that your knowledge was about programming and the MIS part of it, but that you needed domain knowledge uh, for the printing industry to create something that was really, you know, tailored to the industry. Uh, is that something that you still, I mean, you had, I don't know if you still have Bengt on board, but but uh, but he was kind of a go-to person because he came from the industry. So so how do you bridge, let's say, the IT side with the domain knowledge of, of what printers need? Yeah, we have more of these people now. Uh, so we have uh, people helping uh, in the initial phase of a project because, uh, you know, and many of us know it, it's not so, so easy as you just can install the system and everything is working. You have to be business ready. You have to do maybe change management. You have to do some feasibility studies. You have to do some some pre-studies to understand how the product can fit into the, the uh, organization. You might do, do changes in the organization too. And with this knowledge about the industry that we have in, in more people now in our organization, we can help with that. So, so I see myself uh, running a company as a partner to the market and to the industry. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, in just a few moments time, uh, you are going to show us uh, a few things. Uh, what have you, what do you, what do you have in, in, what should we expect from you today? 
uh, I'm going to go uh, through some basics first, uh, uh, talking about uh, us as a company. Uh, we've been covering quite a lot of that right now, so it's going to be very fast now. Uh, <laughs> then <about> we, <laughs> no, no, it's, it's very good. It's very good to have it like that. Uh, th then we're going to have a speed run in the system just to go through everything very quickly. And then we're also going to have uh, an example of an integration. I want to show uh, a complete automated workflow uh, where I can show how we handle files and handle uh, web orders. Uh, just an example of how, what type of integrations we can do. Hmm. Fantastic. Are you ready, Matthias? Yeah, I'm ready. Share your screen and I will remove myself from, uh, from your presentation, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can get you. I will here. do that. I will share the entire screen like that and here we go yeah so i'm gonna quickly now uh, set some basics we have been talking about that uh, morton and i now uh, but uh, so i can go through it kind of quickly but uh, i said that we have a footprint in in uh, many countries in europe uh, we are active in 11 countries as i said uh, we have 1500 unique uh, persons, users uh, working as Omikai every day. Uh, so we're growing uh, as a company. Uh, as I said, also, we, we are uh, targeting a wide variety of businesses because the industry is changing a lot, uh, changing uh, into new uh, production and new uh, ways of, of supporting the customers. So, uh, I mean, the largest segments for us, it's small format, large format, folding cart and display and, and other uh, businesses too. But, but uh, this is transition in the, in the market and, and we are supporting that transition. Um, and our premise, uh, I would say what we see of the industry right now and where it's heading uh, is that we come from a past where we did a lot of manual operations, uh, a lot of manual work. Uh, it was lower margins. It was a lot of on-premise monolithic uh, solutions with more static integrations. They were as they were. Uh, you couldn't change so much. Uh, it's, it could, but it co was costly and it took time. Uh, we predict in the future what we're striving uh, for is, is a situation where I have more micro orders and, and high complexity orders that we can see on the market change uh, of our customers' customers. And that requires more focus on, on a business strategy. Uh, we need to deliver more cloud technology uh, and do a modularized approach uh, with scalable integrations that can change over time and, and drive that with automation and AI. Uh, and many studies uh, in research we see right now is showing that uh, by 2030, uh, half of the, the uh, orders handled in the business will be automated and controlled by AI. Uh, and that is what we are building our uh, solution and our uh, values uh, towards. And how we do that is by talking about a, a tech stack or an ecosystem where <clears throat> Omikai is a core a piece of the puzzle, but of course, uh, a marketing uh, department and a finance department want to choose the marketing tool and the finance tool that they want to choose because it's the best of breed for, for, for their, their problems and their situations. And, and what we have the knowledge and the best practices uh, around is to make all this work together seamlessly integrated. Uh, and by doing that, you will have a solution that is very future-proof and scalable because you can replace one piece of the puzzle over time. Uh, and I'm going to leave this uh, and I'm going to jump over to uh, my uh, other presentation here because now I'm going to show you an example of that. Um, so here I have a Shopify shop I have set up uh, to show an e-commerce uh, scenario where we um, have the ability to, to uh, buy a product. And of course, there are multiple web to print solutions over, uh, out there. Uh, this is just an example because as I showed, it could be whatever uh, web to print or, or CMS or, or other e-commerce solution in this situation. Uh, and then I uh, will uh, make um, a 
just uh, make this uh, edit this, I will have a, a unique uh, uh, print uh, ready file. Um, uh, so, so we have some uh, variable uh, text here <clears throat> and uh, then we'll submit it and I will uh, buy it. Uh, so I will finish the, the um, purchase here. Enter a fake uh, credit card. Like that. And uh, now we have placed an order. Um, what we want to do then, of course, is to continue to automate based on this. We want to push the order into uh, the ERP. Uh, Omikai in this case, and we want to push the files to automated uh, pre-press workflow uh, and or machines. And uh, this uh, workflow is taking a couple of minutes. Uh, so while we do that, we will jump over to, to Omikai. So here is uh, uh, Omikai, uh, our cloud-based ERP. Uh, we run it on uh, uh, virtual servers. So uh, as a customer, you don't need to have any uh, technology or servers or anything yourself. We take care of everything and uh, everything you need is the browser to, to interact with the system. Uh, and while we're waiting for the order to, to be processed, I can have a speed run in the system just to show you all the uh, things in the system. And um, you see here you have a menu to the left and you have different modules in the system. And in the CRM module, usually where you start is the company register. So here you have a list of companies. It could be companies being both customers or suppliers or both, uh, because you, you do that by having a type of the customer. Uh, we do that by specifying addresses and contact persons also. You, you just enter them once and you can categorize them uh, with types and uh, tags and, and different ways of, of uh, categorizing them. Uh, and if we open a customer like this, uh, we will have a, what we call a customer card showing information about the customer. So in top here, we have uh, uh, customer information, uh, like where they are located, uh, financial information, uh, contact information, and so on in different sections like this. And in the bottom, uh, you will have related information. <clears throat> so this company could have multiple addresses, could have multiple contacts, and so on. Uh, and we also want to make a system that is easy to interact with. Uh, so we don't have any windows or dialogues uh, like many other systems have. So if you want to change something, Let's say you want to change the, the city of this company. You just uh, place the cursor in the field and you change it to something and just press enter. And then it's changed, it's updated. And so it's very easy to, to navigate through the system and, and do uh, changes. Um, and the same is for uh, the related uh, data. Um, you can do that too. So you can more or less consider this as a Excel spreadsheet because you can tab through different fields here. Uh, so it's very, very easy to, to interact with and, and to update data like that uh, continuously. Uh, and uh, in the production module, we have uh, our quotes and orders. <clears throat> we also have the, the uh, planning, uh, either as a calendar or as a uh, list. It depends on how the planning manager and the operators are operating. <clears throat> if you're working with a, a digital print shop, then it's more important to have a list of, of orders to do during the day. But if you can work with a, a business like offset printing, where each order is taking more time, then it's more important to have an exact time when we want to do it to, to show the uh, the, the uh, allocation of, of free time during the, the uh, working hours. And uh, <clears throat> we also handle the, 
the transport uh, where we can create transports, uh, either a single transport to a, a customer or a collective transport, a distribution, where you can have one product that you split into multiple uh, transports to different addresses. Um, and transports could be also uh, internal or external. So, uh, uh, and then going to the purchase, <clears throat> we have uh, an article register where we can handle uh, both um, media uh, for 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 uh, for printing or finishing, uh, but also finished goods, uh, things that you bring to the customer, uh, and and uh, we all have. On these articles, we have uh, a stock balance and a stock value. So we are uh, tracking uh, different transactions to the stock. Uh, so we can all the time have a very good understanding of who is, is uh, uh, making inbound deliveries of, of uh, articles, who is uh, withdrawing them, uh, what is the current value uh, of the stock. Uh, so I have a very good uh, overview and traceability of that. We handle trans uh, purchases, uh, purchases of both uh, material, but also of uh, uh, subcontract uh, work, uh, where you want to have some finishing job being done by a, by a subcontractor, uh, for example. Uh, in the finance, we handle, as uh, me and Morten talked about, uh, we handle the invoices and the payments. Uh, but we don't handle the accounting uh, because of tax uh, are different in, in every uh, country and that differ quite a lot. And also finance departments are very keen to, to, to work with their own systems. So that's why uh, it's very uh, natural integration with a financial system. Okay, uh, <clears throat> let's go back to the uh, orders and uh, yeah, 916. We got our uh, order coming in from, from the web shop. Uh, so it was created in, in, in Omikai automatically. Uh, we have uh, in that our product that we are purchasing. Uh, and we also, if we open that product, we also should have, uh, yeah, we have the file included in the, uh, in the order. So here we have the, the, the file. Um, and if we go to the mail, we also have the file here because in this uh, workflow example that I set up, the order is pushed into Omikai and the file could be pushed anywhere. It could be pushed to FTP, to a hot folder then, uh, to an API and to, 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 to an, an, any workflow uh, pre-press automating uh, system. Uh, I didn't choose anything right now. So, so now I just pushed it uh, to myself as an email. Um, but uh, this is 100% fully automatable, uh, so you can initiate the production uh, fully automatically, uh, like that. Uh, if we, because everyone is deep interested in, in, in calculation, so, so let's deep dive a little bit in, in how things are calculated. Uh, so this is a product, this is a large format uh, product. Uh, printed on a print vinyl and uh, on, on, on a, a roll printing uh, digital machine. Um, it's A4. So what we do is we do an imposition where we impose this on uh, the area that's going to be printed. And we also calculate the different uh, operations that you need to produce this product. So in this calculation engine core, we do a lot of things, making this uh, pre-calculation, uh, calculating the, the time uh, and cost of, of every operation. Um, and we do that by the impositioning and also then doing a lot of other things inside and behind the, the, the uh, in the core here. So we, we have, for example, here that the machine is gonna go 80 square meters per hour. It's gonna be 3.7 square meters to produce. It means it's going to have a certain uh, intake time and production time, and you multiply that by uh, the cost of the machine, and then you get uh, the cost of, of the production. 
Uh, and everything this is based on uh, settings that you set up on, on the machine, <clears throat> how the machine is performing in different scenarios, because we have this uh, way of setting up speed tables where you say that the machine is going different speeds uh, depending on, on, on the, the media or the format or the volume. <clears throat> and we also have the, the uh, pricing engine where you can uh, calculate the price of the product either by having the cost uh, with a markup, or you can have a price list where you say that this is a price list uh, contract connected to a group of customers where they're going to purchase this for a certain amount per square meter, depending on, on, on the volume or something. So everything, this is configurable with, with pricing, with cost, with machine specs. And, and by having that uh, set up, the user don't have to worry about anything then, uh, because if you want to change something here, uh, I don't want to have it to be an uh, A4. Uh, it's going to be a 50-50 instead. When you do that, automatically you will have a new imposition and you will have a new uh, calculation and pricing. So it's just a matter of putting the parameters to the calculation engine and it will calculate everything for you. And uh, <clears throat> Then, no matter if you have created this order manually or if you created it automatically, you will have an order. And the next step is to, to push this into production. Uh, and to do that, we supplied a, a date for, for the planning engine. We did, did that from, from the, the order because the order uh, said to, to the uh, Omicai it's going to be a material day. Uh, right now because we, we passed the print ready file in, in the call. So we have current the current date uh, set to, to the order. And the only thing we do then is to, to plan the order. And here can also happen a lot of uh, things. <clears throat> right now we are producing uh, what we call planning cards, <clears throat> meaning we will take the order, we will look at the current production, we will see where it is uh, available to do uh, the pre-press, where it's available to do the printing and trimming and so on. We'll find the, the best suitable path through, through the uh, machine routing. And it will create the planning course for us. Um, and then you can look at the planning, uh, like here, uh, on this order. Here you see the start time of each planning card. <clears throat> but you can also look at the planning as I showed before, uh, as a planning uh, calendar like this, or as uh, planning cards uh, like this. So this is the result after the planning engine has produced uh, all the planning cards. Uh, and we will find the, the uh, web border here, and you have the print operation here. So the next step is to, to gather information about any deviations. Uh, how long time did it take to do the printing? What uh, amount of material did I use? Uh, right now I'm showing this uh, manually. Uh, so here we can uh, report back that I used uh, one square meter for the intake and three square meters for the production, uh, for example, just an example. Uh, and then I'm doing this, this reporting, and now the production is done on this operation. Uh, and if we open that operation, <clears throat> you can see that we have um, tracked the, the time and the articles that was needed. I also did a stock log update, meaning that <clears throat> if the operator is saying that we use two square meters, two square meters will be withdrawn from, from the uh, stock of that uh, article automatically. Uh, and why is it important to do all this time reporting and, and, and uh, material consumption? Yes, because you need to gather information about the performance and the profitability of the, uh, both the production and the order to be able to do uh, analysis. Because then we come to another part of our system where we look at the, the analysis. Uh, and here we can analyze basically everything. I have a couple of dashboards here showing that uh, we can analyze the quotations, uh, uh, orders, and production, and so on. And if we look at uh, here, we see that uh, we have the profitability per salesperson, or we have the uh, 
other profitability and performance here on, on the quotations. And uh, the neat thing about making these uh, dashboards uh, compared to making static reports is that here we can drill down. Uh, we can look at, uh, for example, I only want to look at this product. And then I can see that we have 84.67% uh, uh, coverage uh, on the jobs of this product. So, and I can also do this uh, on different time periods. Let's say I only want to look at uh, Q1 this year, then I can, can look at that. So this is a very, very important tool for the, the management team uh, to analyze the performance and profitability of, of the production, sales, uh, stock, everything, to, to make fact-based decisions. Because making fact-based decisions are, is the most important thing. You need to base what kind of business you're going to focus on, what kind of machines you're going to buy on facts, not by feelings or thoughts. And uh, this we do with, with uh, many other things. Uh, production, for example, you can see that uh, if you look at uh, certain uh, operator, uh, you can see that they reported back 144 uh, hours, I mean, minutes, sorry, minutes of jobs. Uh, but the plan was uh, 180. So you can analyze the, the performance of production, sales, uh, invoicing, and, and uh, all these things. Uh, we also have a very new uh, CO2 analysis uh, dashboard where you can analyze the CO2 footprint for, for different uh, customers, for different products, for different time periods. So, I mean, if we gather a lot of data into the system, there are many, many ways to, to analyze that. Uh, uh, if we continue with this order, let's say this order is uh, then uh, planned and, and uh, uh, produced by, by the, the operators, so it's done. Uh, the next step is to, to convert this to uh, an invoice. Uh, and we can do that individually, or we can do it uh, collective invoicing where you take multiple uh, orders and, and uh, invoice them together. Uh, we're not going to do it now. So now we have an invoice like this. And uh, when we look at this, uh, it's an invoice uh, header with uh, invoice rows. And all this is editable then, of course. Uh, so you can uh, change, I want to give them more discount, for example, when I'm going to do the, the invoicing, you can do that. You can add new invoice rows. Uh, extra for something. Uh, uh, so it's going to be uh, something that we uh, will charge uh, 200 uh, euros for, for example. So you, you can uh, do all this editing either on the quotation or the order or the, the invoice. Everything is transfer, transferred from, from one stage to the next stage uh, all the time. And uh, let's uh, look at the the uh, okay yeah okay, okay I, that, I I'm gonna to I'm gonna do uh, t -t 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 this one uh, that one had a bad accounting so I mean <clears throat> here we have uh, an invoice uh, just to show you our uh, our reports. Uh, so we do these documents uh, for, for quotations, for orders, for invoices, and are very highly uh, editable and, and configurable, how they're going to look like, uh, both with what data you want to have, what uh, uh, header information you want to have, what footer information you want to have. And all these invoices, quotations, and so on, you can send directly to uh, the customer. Uh, as an email like this. So you send everything directly from the system. Uh, or of course, we can do the integrations where, where you transfer the, the invoice to your financial system and send it from there. But uh, the most typical thing is to, to send all the documents from, from the system because then you have traceability and then you can see what uh, uh, documents you have sent to, to what customer uh, for certain periods. And we do this by uh, if I go back to, to my uh, text stack here again, and we do this, this by integrating with your uh, mail servers. 
So if you have, for example, an Office 365 uh, account, we uh, use that account to, to send emails to uh, the customer. Uh, and that means that everything will be in your outbox. So you can uh, have it accessible both from the system, but also from, from um, your outbox, your, your uh, email client. And here I show a little bit also that uh, we talked about the integrations, <clears throat> the finance integrations, the marketing automation in integrations, e-commerce and so on. Uh, this was just an example showing it could be Shopify, it could be a financial system, it could be another thing. But this, our, our view on this is that this must be very open and, and scalable because over time, things will change. Uh, you will have uh, Omikai as a core over time, but other uh, products will change over time. What is best of breed at, at uh, certain times? And it has to be easy to, to do that change. Uh, and it shouldn't be that uh, you will require us to do that because it's going to be in, in the core. It needs to be a, a, an open integrationable uh, ecosystem where the customer can do this uh, this maintenance and, and, and uh, future uh, development, or we can do it, or a third party can do it. Uh, so our philosophy is to support a very, very open uh, ecosystem or tech stack, whatever you call it, uh, to, to be able to, to, to build a, a seamlessly integrated solution that is uh, operational and, and bring great values over time. Uh, and uh, I mean, sometimes you, you can have situations where you have your production or your factory is part of a, an enterprise <clears throat> and uh, you have a headquarter to, to report to. So one uh, part here is also the uh, enterprise headquarter. Uh, we do this in, 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 in many situations where data needs to be pushed to the headquarter so they can have insight in, in the purchasing, uh, in the uh, finance. But you as a company or a factory can work independently uh, within your, 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 your uh, factory. Uh, and then you have to provide this kind of, of integrations to that too. And that we do too. Uh, we have the best, of pra best practices and, and the knowledge about how to do that. Uh, so to summarize, uh, we are having an open scalable platform uh, that will help bring values to you uh, and to help you reach your business goals. Uh, we do that by having a core that uh, gives you precision, uh, reliability and efficiency uh, in, in your business. Uh, management wise, uh, a platform that will be future proof uh, will bring uh, process automation, standardization, because it's very important to get the entire organization to do things the same way uh, to make the same results. <clears throat> and very important to focus on the fact-based decision-making because uh, when you have data that you collect and analyze and drill down, you will base uh, all your business uh, decisions on, on fact and not on, on feelings. And technology-wise, <clears throat> to have an open, uh, solution driven by APIs, being cloud native. Uh, this is the, the catalyst or, or uh, that you need to be able to do this kind of uh, ecosystems where, where you can have everything working seamlessly together. And talking uh, last a uh, little bit about a typical project that we do, <clears throat> because as I said to Morton in the beginning, I don't think that this is uh, a system you just uh, install at the customer's site and everything's working perfectly. You need to be part and be a partner to that customer. You need to, as we do, start with an introduction where we get to know the company, get to know their situation and their uh, problems and, and the workarounds they do, uh, their future business goals. Uh, see to that the, that they are business ready. It means that you can do change management. You need to change uh, the organization maybe uh, to change some of the uh, other systems that you're working with to, to build the complete ecosystem that you, you want to have for the future. Uh, because you can come from, you have many situations where you come from a situation that you, you have a certain system just because you have to have it because that is the only system our ERP has an integration with. 
but I want uh, this to be a scenario where every department chooses the, their system that they uh, think is best for their need. And, and then you have to overview the entire tech stack and, and the organization to make it ready for, for uh, implementation. And then a lot of data collection you need to gather data uh, about the, the business. <clears throat> we uh, have our standard setups uh, so we can very quickly uh, set up an account for a customer. We have default uh, machine data and default uh, pricing and cost and thing and everything. Uh, but it needs to be the final touch of, of the uh, customer that you're working with. Uh, their operators uh, might say that you can only run this in 75% of the theoretical speed because we have problem with uh, paper or something quality so we need to have the final touch and adjustments of, of, of uh, the uh, machines and pricing and everything and then we do a configuration uh, where we change these parameters to make it suit uh, their situation and their need and then we go live uh, and supporting during that phase a lot because uh, it's a critical situation where you go live in a new system <clears throat> you are coming from a situation where we've been working with one system for many, many years, uh, and you need a lot of support in that initial phase. And then last, the customer success phase, where we not let go, uh, we, we hold hand uh, continuously to, to, to help the customer to, to achieve their business goals uh, they wanted over time and, and supply our best practices and our knowledge about how to take certain steps uh, because we have a very strong believing that we should take this in, in, in steps. We have to do uh, one step to, to really see the value out of that before we take the next step uh, because it's very important to, to have value coming out from the project uh, at every stage of the project. Um, and uh, that was everything that I had. Uh, I think I'm quite on time. Uh, and if anyone wants want to contact us, uh, you can find us on uh, omikai.com or you can contact us by email, info omikai.com. Or uh, as Morten also said, uh, we'll have my LinkedIn uh, profile uh, in this QR code also. So uh, please contact me if you want to talk about uh, industry change, market change, <clears throat> best practice, how to uh, handle certain situations. Doesn't have to be uh, an MIS implementation, could be whatever situations you are in. We have a lot of knowledge, a lot of uh, best practices and, and, and uh, uh, thoughts about how to make this uh, good value for customers. Uh, so please contact us. Um... Matthias, uh, thank you very much for, uh, I mean, I think it was a super nice uh, uh, presentation and I wouldn't have expected anything else but from you, so uh, super <laughs> nice. Um, thank you. Uh, for the audience, uh, if you have questions, you can ask questions in uh, the chat on either uh, YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook. Uh, we will get all the questions into our uh, little software system here, so uh, fire away if there are any questions or reach out to Matthias, as he just uh, said before. Uh, Matthias, um, what I like about uh, the solution that you just presented is it seems it seems extremely simple to use. And I know that, that sometimes if you look at uh, some of the systems where it is combined into uh, a financial system, there can be a lot of things that a normal user doesn't really have to consider in, in his or her work, basically. Does it give, I mean, because I think that most companies that do MIS systems or, or integrated solutions to ERP systems, they, of course, do it for a, a reason. And I was just wondering, do you, um, do you see any uh, pitfalls in not having a system where it's integrated to the financial system? Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, if uh, we, in these situations, we, we do pre-studies and we gather data and we summarize the uh, ROI analysis and, and we can see how much manual uh, labor time you put in in certain situations you you can enter things double uh, you can uh, check it three times you you can do it manually but by automizing it by by transferring data from system to system 
we can save so much time, so extremely much time. Uh, and I think you have to do it to be competitive. Mm. Uh, and we see that. Uh, so, so I think that it's, it's a little bit different in every country, but uh, I think that in, in many countries, uh, the technology is in focus. Mm. So many printing houses consider themselves more to be a, an IT company than a printing company mm. because they, they focus a lot of our business strategy and, and on technology to make this as digital and, and automized as possible. And to keep up competition with those kind of companies, it's important to, to, to uh, focus on this. Hmm. Um, that, of course, makes sense. Um, I, the reason why I was asking is just because we spoke about one of the advantages of, of not having the legacy the way you have to. Uh, mm. I know that your, your chairman of the board, Thomas, again, he used to work in a, in a company with a large ERP system, MMIS systems. And, and, you know, at that time in the, in the 80s and 90s, before the internet was really uh, uh, used, and, and also the trust in, in cloud storage, uh, that, was, that was the time of the, of the game, basically. That was how it was supposed to be. Um, another question. Mm. Um, I know we have talked about that a couple of times, and it's not because I want to be provocative, but I just need to ask because I forgot about it. If you, I mean, I remember I used to work for, uh, in the music industry, I, I used to work for a company that changed from a old Unix-based ERP system to a new, uh, newer uh, Windows-based ERP system. And I remember, uh, I think me and my colleagues, all of us were almost about to leave the business because it was so uh, interfering in your, in your life and, and, and how you do things. When you focus on the MIS part and not the financial part, does it also mean that the interference with, let's say, daily operations as an employee is less in, intrusive, or, or how do you see that? Yeah, both that I think we do it in a way that it's uh, less, as you say, but also that we have the approach uh, to understand that this is not, not just a system that you just install and everything is working. We are talking to all the stakeholders, and we are mapping out the the, the uh, roles and processes and, and really understand how the organization is working. And you have to have everybody on board also, because if you just, as a management decision, come with a system that uh, we're going to use this, good luck, uh, <laughs> it's going to be anarchy, uh, hmm. of course. So we have to understand that we have to do a lot of preparation before we, we, we initiate the, the, the uh, MIS onboarding. Hmm. And, and when you talk about the onboarding process, I understand that that you, the path where you go from A to C, basically. Right? Yeah. I was just wondering, uh, if you look at Omikai as a solution for printing companies, uh, are you targeting any particular size of company or it does Omikai f basically fit all sizes or who is your typical kind of customer? Uh, it fits everybody, I would say, but but we have in our uh, target counting, we are focusing mostly on a couple of segments and a certain size. Uh, I think that size when you are from 50, 60 people up to a couple of hundred people, it's where you bring the most value to, to the, the industry. Uh, uh, because you have to be more people and a and, and couple of departments just to see the benefit of of having data digital and automized, mm -hmm. um, I would say. But if you are, let's say, a, a startup, uh, sometimes it's also nice because, I mean, you have to pick some kind of uh, uh, solution to manage your business uh, and mm -hmm. your codes and your products and also the web to storefront that you have integrated in, in Omikai. I was just thinking, so does it, when you say 50 plus people, does that mean that basically it is too expensive for the very small ones to get onboarded? No, or no. Is it more, uh, or is it variable based on on size, or how how is it how is it priced? It's variable to size, so so okay. cost wise, it will not be an impact for for a smaller companies. No, okay. So I'm so just talking about that. So oh. basically, when you say it fits all, if you are like a smaller st startup. Uh, or a smaller company, uh, the price refers to that, and basically that gives you the opportunity to take the full advantage of Omikai, because basically, as I understand from you, you get everything we've seen today, right? That is not something where you have to buy extra modules or things like that. Yeah, that, that's right. Uh, and, and also, of course, uh, it's, it could be beneficial for, for those uh, smaller companies uh, cost-wise too. So, so, I mean, but, but typically, 
uh, as you describe, a startup, the technical driven, uh, want to automize things from scratch, then it's perfect. Uh, it is. Hmm. I'm, I'm talking about situations where you have comparing the smaller company being doing things manually before didn't have a system yeah. and the companies are a little bit bigger that had a system. Yeah. It's very much easier to, to understand for a company that already have a system. Why the need value it. is of having something that yeah, is exactly. easy and fast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, one thing that I remember from a printing company I used to work in uh, also changing, uh, uh, that was an ERP system with an MIS integrated into it. I remember that one of the concerns is uh, legacy data. Uh, because often as a project manager or as a salesperson, you go back to, let's say, old orders or something. Do you recommend mm -hmm. that you have a period of time of two systems running side by side? Or do you have easy kind of tools to migrate data from typically one solution to another? Or, or how does that work for you? Yeah, we migrate data, uh, whatever customer needs. You, typically, it's the CRM data and 50-50 could be that you need to have the orders. Uh, some want to have it, some want to start from scratch. It depends, but we are open for, for both. Uh, and also, yeah, you need to, to run the systems in parallel uh, just to be able to compare uh, costs and, and pricing and to get everybody uh, familiarized with the new solution before you take the, the milestone where you go uh, in full production in the new system. So mm -hmm. that is typically a parallel phase uh, mm -hmm. where you do that. Mm. Uh, one of the things I didn't hear you talk about today, but I'm a little bit curious about as well, is uh, you know, you have talked a lot about integrations, and, and I, I saw also from your schematics the integration to, for example, uh, uh, InFocus Switch and to to other workflow solution software, of course. Um, I was just wondering if I say IoT and uh, JDF and uh, JMF and, and all these kind of things, what do you say? Go. <laughs> that, so, was so, an, that was an easy one, right? <laughs> it's an easy one. Yeah. So, so, so we're not uh, data specific. Could be JDF, XML APIs, uh, JSON, IoT data. It doesn't matter uh, because in, in this integration workflows, uh, you can transform data to whatever. Uh, I, so that's I, not an issue. And that is a benefit of, of having an open architecture because if you have a one system that only speaks JDF, for example, then you can only speak JDF. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to have this so open so you can change it over time to whatever data uh, language or system you want to communicate with. Hmm. Mm, that I get, but I was more thinking that if you have, let's <clears throat> say, uh, SIP4 or JDF or uh, IoT, sometimes that can be used to influence your decision. You said that data is what you should, what you need in order to drive the right decisions. And let's say that you have an IoT that continuously measure your throughput and output of your of all the machines you have in in your in your printing facility that mm. might influence your costing models so that's why i'm asking whether this is something that is not just integrated for the sake of integration but can also be used basically to mm. let's say have a different costing model of your of your equipment if you need to right? uh, that that was like the open question basically yeah, the, the, then you more make this uh, workflows for collecting the sensor data uh, to a workflow like you Told, uh, said switch or, or something, or uh, Zapier or another uh, power automate <laughs> to push it into Omikai uh, mm -hmm. to, to feed Omikai with the data. Okay. Uh, the benefit of doing that is that workflow can be produced and developed by uh, by the customer, by third party, by us. It's an open field, an open open scalable uh, architecture. So mm -hmm. um, um, when you have the experience you have now uh, with the different customers you have and and I'm, I'm i'm also very pleased on your behalf that you have 1500 users now because that is uh, uh, that is actually a, an achievement because last time we spoke it was fewer companies and fewer users of course so the, uh, that the, that you are able to scale uh, your company and, and things like that is is uh, i think is a sign of good management and good uh, product development so congratulations on that one I was just wondering now when you have so many customers and get that experience, uh, where do you see the biggest challenges for Omikai when the customer is looking into both your solutions, but also the competitors in the market? Uh, I think the biggest challenge is uh, that you must do something as a company. <laughs> that, that you're not, our, our biggest competitor is not another company 
competitor. It's status quo. It's like you, you don't do anything. You just sit back and hope for better times. Hmm. Uh, I mean, whatever system you're going to invest in and whatever project you're going to do, do something because uh, you have to to stay competitive. You, you need to, to, to take your business to a new level where you do more digitalization, optimization just to stay competitive. Hmm. Uh, so I think our biggest uh, competitor is companies that are thinking that you shouldn't do anything. They are having bad experience or, or they are, are not having trust in, in and what the supplier can, can do for them. Hmm. Um, that is the biggest challenge, I would say. Hmm. So, so, so don't be afraid to, 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 to do things because you have to yeah. or you should. I remember because uh, we have uh, done one customer field from you from Trello, um, Trello Group, sorry, yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, as far as I remember, they were like really pleased with the benefits they got out of Omikai as as the their MIS system. And I, I take that uh, case studies uh, is probably taking some of the pain out of other people that are making decisions about doing nothing or do something, right? Uh, and I, mm-hmm. I, by the way, I like the way that you're saying it because. Um, uh, a little bit later, we're going to, to hear from uh, Printly's uh, Danish company, but we are going to have mm-hmm. a presentation from America. And I think that Casper from Printly's, he said the same to me. He said the, be- the worst thing a company can do is basically do nothing. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and of course, uh, I take that that is something that probably is also a challenge for all of you presenting here today is that if people have an ERP <coughs> or MIS system, uh, and it works, then it is like a long selling process to convince them changing to something new, right? Yeah, both uh, do something, but but also understand that it's important to do a very uh, thorough pre-study mm. and that we can can assist with and very good at mm. to, to understand and deep dive in the, the organization and the tech stack and, and bring our best practice uh, to life. So, I mean, do something. Uh, I would say it is the, the key to success here. Fantastic. Matthias, uh, with that said, uh, I look forward to see you at our non-event in Copenhagen in November. And yep. uh, I want to thank you very much for being part of uh, this uh, uh, crazy day with uh, nine vendors mm-hmm. uh, presenting uh, their different solutions. And uh, hopefully, uh, I, I hope it will be uh, beneficial for the viewers first and foremost, but also for the companies attending. So uh, thank you for your time here and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Good luck of the day. Bye-bye. Bye.